What's good, guys? We're back at it again with another video. As you see from the title today, we actually have a Jaden Hardy and Marjan uh, Bochamp breakdown today. I saw you guys were actually messing with the having two to three to four, you know, elite level prospects, players in the same breakdown, obviously with the Montverde one I just did, or literally the one I think it was a couple of days ago, Imani and Jalen Duran, and then with these two today, especially when like I get a lot of comments, okay, you guys want more game film, things like that within the actual breakdown videos. Um, so it's good to, you know, have more than one, especially with these teams, how they're like low-key superpowers sometimes. So it's good to be able to just watch both or, like I said, like with Montverde, watch dang near five, six elite level prospects in the same game and come to you guys with that level of content. But these two, Jaden Hardy and Marjan, go back on the channel to my Jaden Hardy breakdown. We did that a while ago. Like I said that in that, I said this in that video. Uh, I got I got this little coin nickname from Rashad Phillips, Yoda. He calls him Six Star Hardy, and he lives up to that name because I think that film and that video was from like his junior year in high school, and this dude was a legitimate three-level score as a junior in high school. So like I said in that video, he was a pro at that time. When he was in high school, he was already a pro. This dude can hit any shot in the gym at any angle with any type of contest. He can also attack the rim, and he got the you know he got the post game, the fadeaways. Like he has everything that early so literally i've been you know what i'm saying waiting to get my hands on some more recent film of his to see his progression see how good he's gotten and then marjan the only thing i've seen of him i think was this little 30 sec second to a minute clip on twitter of him at the uh the crossover jamal crawford's uh, pro am because he is from washington i forgot to mention he's also a six seven uh they call him what shooting guard uh small four like i said six seven so he has good size and that but in that clip i saw this dude dumb bounce like i'm talking about freaking some stuff like dunking crazy bopping dudes also shooting the ball off the dribble things like that so from what i'm expecting from that is going to be you know what i'm saying this dude's going to be nice even though he was only rated number 47 in the class of 2020 when i'm starting to hear and see on twitter just hear from analysts just hear about how his stock is rising you know what i'm saying from what i'm expecting like this dude should be pretty nice also, like I said, I haven't seen Hardy in a while, so I'm excited for that. I'm not going to hold you guys up any longer. Let's go. Even though Jaden Hardy is extremely comfortable with the ball in his hands, he's still adjusting to the speed and pace of the NBA. As you can see here, as he split the ball screen, he got a little out of control trying to make the drop-off pass. Also, make sure you run back on defense instead of jogging because of what he did. He gave up the layup. He's still extremely effective going downhill, as you can see here, using his body to ward off the contact. For all my younger players, I want you guys to take note of this slow-mo. Watch how he bumps off the defender in order to shield himself from the shot blocker and finish. Great job by Jaden here on the pick and roll, extending the ball out to get by the shot blocker and finish. Even though this will be considered a bad shot, these are still the shots that Jaden has been taking his entire career, and at some point they will start to fall. He's a pretty good contested jump shooter, so wide open, bucket. At six foot seven, Marjan is extremely versatile, easily going coast to coast for the lay. He's also a plus athlete, even by NBA standards. And once he gets to that launching pad off two feet, it's over with. Again, he's a legit freak athlete. He's also shown that he can get to his spots and be patient. And at his size, he can easily shoot over the defenders and get the bucket. Back to back plays from Hardy to Bochamp, showing that they're already starting to have a little bit of chemistry together. And on this next play, you can see again, he gets to his spot, raise up, bucket. Just like Hardy, Bochamp is also still adjusting to the speed of the NBA. I froze it here so you guys can see on fast breaks like this, the ball has to go now. You might get it back, but since he kept it, it turned into a turnover. Okay, so Jay Hardy, we're going to start with him first. Um, at this point right now, I just feel like he's just trying to get a feel for the game, right? Like a couple months ago to a year ago, he's in high school, like playing against high schoolers. Now you're playing against grown men day in, day out. That They aren't just grown men, like grown men you play at LA Fitness. These are grown men who are also pros who also more or less can match your athletic ability. You know what I'm saying? Maybe not because he is in the G League and he is, I think he is that. So they might not be able to match your skill level, but they're st they've still been there for a while. So they understand the, the pro game. And that, that little curve, you're seeing it right now with Cade Cunningham, people trying to call him a bust. No, he's just trying to get a feel for it. Yeah, his, his efficiency numbers aren't the best, but as you can see, I think he just had what? 18 10 and i forget what his other uh stat was but he's starting to figure it out the same thing's going to happen with uh jay hardy like i said he did have 12 points uh 4 for 14 from the field but as you can see he also did have five turnovers now a lot of those turnovers were okay he's driving he has somebody on his back he throws he has a drop off he might throw it too low or too high 
teammate can't catch it, goes out of bounds. Same thing in the pick and roll situations like that. The pass might be a little wild. Teammate can't catch it, the turnover. That's really just him being sped up, right? But offensively for him, in terms of scoring, he's taking the same shots he always has, like you saw. When he gets downhill, he can still get downhill almost whenever he wants. And he's at 6'4", and he has a pretty stocky body. As you saw, he can hit, hit his defender, bump him off of him. It's an easy lay. He's finishing through contact, things like that. But like I just said, he's taking the same exact shots he's taken his entire career. It's just they're, they're not going in. Like, this is a game of makes and misses. Everyone's going to miss. He might have just had, like, an off night. Like I said, he's getting used to having people that are, you know, closer to his size, athletic ability in front of him. Because as you saw, when he got the wide open three, knockdown. It was just now some of the some of the shots he takes. You know, being that I've seen him make that those shots so many times, you know, I'm kind of a little biased to it all. Yeah, that is, but it is a bad shot. A lot of the shots, you know, he was taking, they would be considered bad shots. But at the same time, like I said, great players make bad shots, good shots, because the only bad shot in the NBA is one that doesn't go in. You see that, especially with all these shots, you know, KD, Steph, uh, what? Shea just hit a logo three with like a minute left. You know how crazy that is? Like that was last night against the Lakers. You understand how crazy that is? Like the only bad shot in the NBA is one that doesn't go in. But all in all, I feel like he's just taking the steps. He's starting to, you know what I'm saying? He's starting to come into himself. He's just now getting into a league. He just has getting into the league. He just has to understand his pace, not getting sped up. Maybe at this point, you know what I'm saying? Try and get himself warmed up first before taking a lot of, you know, contested jumpers, fadeaways. Just try and get a couple open looks first, get to the free throw line, things like that before he starts, you know, really trying to get off. Uh, but let's transition into uh, Marjan uh, because this, I never, like I said, I only saw 30 seconds to a minute of him, but this dude is scary. It's scary. I don't know how he was number 47 in his class because maybe I need to revisit, you know, the 2020 class uh, because, and we did, the, we did the top 10 in 2020. Maybe I need to revisit it because I didn't, I don't remember seeing 40, 45 players better than this dude like 45 46 players better than him i i'm sorry i don't i don't remember seeing that because this dude six seven what have i said another versatile forward who can do almost everything you saw he has no problem getting off the glass he's gone like a long lanky uber athletic you know what i'm saying like this dude will take one dribble from the three-point line he's gone and he's dunking on you with contact he take what? He gets the, it's a little 50-50 uh, ball, gets that, takes one dribble, cocks it all the way back here. Boom. You know what I'm saying? Like, this dude is a real freak athlete, especially at his size. That's dangerous. And now I didn't see a whole lot of threes. You know, I'm not even sure if he took one. He might have taken one. Um, but, you know, it looks like he's more comfortable in that mid-range, getting to his mid-range spots there. You saw uh, he's good taking dudes off the dribble. That's another thing that's going to be huge for him. Like, this dude's first step cat like hey, it's, it's, he's gone like the second he rips he's gone you see he's drawing the fouls with ease he's getting by dudes you know what i'm saying with ease and with that athleticism once he gets to the rim i mean you have to make a business decision do you want to get dunked on or do you just want to you know just just give up the two points like or just foul him because he, he gonna punch on you if he gets two feet in the paint if he gets to you know what i'm saying he gets deep enough but like for him this dude is a surprise you know, I, I wish I would have been up on him a little bit earlier because this dude can play like he's nice. Uh, I'm excited to see, especially Scoot's hurt right now. Um, so, and that's that's somebody I really want to watch. Obviously, he went to Kelly, went to the same high school. Uh, what, the youngest, youngest professional basketball player in American history. So, I've already said before, you know what I'm saying, in terms of the basketball goat of Kel, he got that, you know what I'm saying. Obviously, nobody can top that. So, you know, I just can't wait till he gets back. So we can do his breakdown and uh, and also see what Hardy and Bochamp do as they go throughout the season. But like, share, subscribe, turn on post notifications. Appreciate you guys watching. Uh, for the subscriber breakdowns, one-on-one -on -one instruction on your game, things you can do to just better your career, uh, hit my uh, website, Patreon for the day-to-day -day things like that, story times, real story times that I can't really tell on here. You know what I'm saying? Hit the Patreon. Like I said, appreciate you guys watching. I'll see you guys next time with the next video.